All right, so we're here day two of the ITAD Summit 2024 at the Fountain Blue Hotel in Miami, and I'm here with Sue Bywater-Reed from mm -hmm. Vita, uh, who just got done with the uh, Tech Trailblazers, the Women in ITAD panel, which was absolutely phenomenal. I think you guys did a great job um, inspiring the room, and I think um, you in particular added a ton to the to the panel, and we were really excited to have you. So welcome, and, and thank you for your participation. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, Vita and what you guys do within the ITAD space, just as a, just kind of yeah, give everybody. Yeah, sure. So um, Vita are a secure, sustainable and compliant organization, basically ITAD. Um, so ITS at disposition, but also ITS at lifecycle management as well. Uh, we have facilities over in UK, in Ireland, and we're opening a new facility in Europe. So we are getting uh, uh, out there a little bit more. We also rely on our service providers and partners to help offer a, a global solution um, to our clients. Um, we've been in business since 2010. Um, we rebranded actually in 2021, 20, uh, and that was because we understood that uh, security, agility, um, compliance was was very key, and we rebranded our name at that point to Vita. Pre previously, it was AMI. Awesome. Very cool. So um, I want to talk, I want to focus a little bit because I think you really brought a lot of thought leadership to this particular summit around um, diversity in the industry, yeah. um, pr primarily focusing on women, of course, but, um, you know, also being an international participant here and being one of our international speakers, I think you really represent a lot of where the ITAD industry is going. And so, um, you know, one of the things that struck me um, as part of the preparation for your panel also, you know, and you talked about it on the panel, is you have a, just an absolutely remarkable story about how you got where you are. And um, I think it's inspirational. And, and if you don't mind sharing it again, um, you know, offstage, um, if you want yeah. to share that, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and it is. And I, I've actually just been stopped by a lot of people to say, you know, that's that's really it was lovely to hear your story of how you, you know, how you grew uh, personally. So um, I started in the ITAD industry in year 2000 um, as a as a, a mum of three, uh, as a receptionist. And that was because, you know, my children are all at school and I needed to find an identity and a reception job was nine till two, great for, uh, for the school hours. So um, I got the job. I didn't realise at the time that there had been, you know, near near on a hundred applicants for that because, you know, that was a, it was a, a time that every every mum wanted in a in a small town. Um, and then I carried on. I was doing lots of meets and greets as a receptionist there at that current company, at that previous company. And um, I realised that I needed probably to earn a little bit more money. Um, and I also needed a little bit more education because I didn't understand the ITAD industry. I was a receptionist and I didn't really yeah. need to know anything other. Um, I then went through a divorce and thought, okay, now I need to push myself. So I went to the MD of that company and I said, can you help support me go back into education? And he said, okay, I, I'll do it, but you will um, have to pay back everything that I, I give you in terms of financially supporting you if you fail. Uh, which was great because I wasn't going to fail because I didn't have the money to pay back. I had now three dependent children and a single mum. Right, so no option. I had no option. Right. So uh, that was tough because it was operational management. It was reflective management. It was financial analysis. It was really tough. So I really had to understand to do all my essays and, and to, to get the, the career I needed to understand the full the full section of each and every area within that ITAD business. So from there, um, I, I did, uh, I got a postgrad degree and then I went through that business um, as a HR uh, executive to business development manager to looking after the, um, the Asia Pacific sector, selling services, selling assets um, and, and literally took 13 years climb in within that within that business itself which was great I had male mentors I had female mentors um, people saw in me a lot what I didn't see in myself so I think that gave me a lot of inspiration and each chapter was I evolved as a person because I didn't know who I was prior to that so um, each chapter of that journey was was key I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for the world so and what's your title now I'm strategic relationship director for Vita so um, I, as I say, I've come from being a, a consultant to business development manager, managing a team and, and nurturing that team with the experience that I've gained and, 
knowing uh, some of the difficulties and challenges that I've had and seeing those difficulties and challenges in other people and, and trying to inspire them to be who, who they can be. I've now heard the story three times and I still get goosebumps. Like I literally just got goosebumps as you were telling. It was such a great story. Um, and it's proof that, you know, with, with, with work, work ethic, you can, yeah. you can learn any industry and you can do it. Yeah. Uh, but it takes the effort. It takes the time. It takes the commitment and, and you're living proof of that. And it's super inspiring. And, Thanks. um, you know, I really hope that, you know, as people walked out of that session today, they took that story with them and, um, you know, the other thing that really strikes me, um, sort of, uh, throughout the, the last couple of days is, um, you know, you, we, we've had these conversations, but you very legitimately walked the walk. I mean, when, when we look at your team that you guys have here, um, you've got some folks on your team that, you know, um, almost literally, it looks like you, you know, you've taken under your wing and, and are, you know, you're doing that mentorship thing yeah. and it's so inspiring. Yeah. Um, you know, what is that, you know, from your perspective, what value does that mentorship relationship bring both from the mentor side, but the mentee side? Yeah. So, um, huge, it's encouragement. Um, and you know, I'm always looking at areas where people feel have got, you know, self, self doubt, um, and really trying to bring in, I, I make a secure space for, for each person that I mentor, women or men. Uh, make that secure space and that allows them to feel it okay to say that you know I'm, I'm not okay and that I find this challenging and I don't think I'm good enough or I don't think I'm strong enough and I don't know enough because some of the the people that I mentor is like I really don't know enough and I said you believe in yourself because the people that you're speaking to know a lot less than you you are expert in your field and then when you give them you know that sort of inspirational chat they're like really I, I you know I, I actually I am and I think that's for me it's I love to see that I love to see someone grow and flourish and and really have trust in themselves for them I think it's uh it gives them the the peace of mind to know that yeah they are good enough and they and they can perform and they can push themselves because I always talk about challenges challenge yourself and if they're boundaries look at the boundaries if if they're not harming anybody else, stretch the boundary. Because somebody said to me recently, so you push the boundaries. And I said, if I didn't push the boundaries, I wouldn't be where I am today. That's right. And, and you know, it, at least from my observation, again, it's limited over a couple of days, but at least from my observation, I genuinely believe the folks that you have here, you know, would run through a brick wall for you. I mean, you guys have to have, with a mentality like that, you guys have to have a rock solid team. I would imagine yeah. like everybody just buys into that. Yeah. I mean, it's hard not to, right? So pivoting just a little bit, right, to the idea of, you know, a show like the ITAD Summit and, you know, getting the industry together and participating in that. You know, Vita, obviously, I mean, you guys all flew across the ocean to get over here. You know, yeah. you've made a pretty significant investment in this project, uh, in this event. Um, what is it about um, these events and specifically the ITAD Summit that is so important for you guys to, to make that investment? Um, one key um, point is is the networking, is is meeting up with our partners and service providers, being face to face with them, understanding more about what their values are and what their future vision is. Um, to just feel, I actually feel this is like a family. If I'm going to be honest, you know, ITAD is a family, so we're we're all we're all engaged in that, and um, just seeing, you know, how and what we can do to to perform better. Um, and why? Because, you know, we've spoke a lot about ITAD version two and, and where it's going. And I think, you know, we rely on each other. And as I said before earlier, that, you know, many, many years ago, it was in, you were competitor, we can't speak together. I'm so pleased that's changed because, you know, we, we are together and we are performing and we're, we're delivering a, uh, a service um, and we have a responsibility to, to deliver that in partnership, but also individually when we have direct clients. Yeah, and and you know certainly we've seen a lot of that in the show. I mean, the, yeah. the buzz in the exhibit hall has been absolutely amazing, and it's collaborative, right? It's not competitive. We, you know, it's, it's it really has changed that yeah. way. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time um, and for your inspiration. I genuinely, um, you know, uh, when, when I call home, I you know I I, I will probably share your story because uh, you know I think it's it's just a great one, and the, you know, as somebody who has a small business myself. Um, you know, there's a lot to be learned from some of the things you said today. So thank, thank you again, um, for your time and, um, you. 
hope you have a great rest of the summer. Thank you. And I think I hope that we can work together again in Mallorca. That would be great. Yeah. Uh, hopefully in April we'll, yeah. uh, we'll be on the uh, Spanish coast enjoying yeah. uh, enjoying this all again. So, Thank you very much. Awesome. Dude. Thank you. Thank you, Sue.